Here's another example of how to work with complex fractions or what I call complicated fractions. And again, realize that we have a numerator and a denominator. And then in the numerator, we have a fraction and a fraction. In the denominator, we have a fraction and a fraction. Each of those, of course, have denominators. So I like to circle those. Here's the x minus y, the x plus y, x plus y, and here we have x squared minus y squared. And right away, I recognize that there's a difference of squares, which means I can probably factor that. And let's go ahead and rewrite this fraction then. So this is equal to, um, here we have 3 over x minus y plus 1 over x plus y divided by 2 over x plus y and minus 3 over, when I factor this, it becomes x plus y times x minus y. And again, I'm going to circle all those denominators, x minus y, x plus y, x plus y, and the product of x plus y and x minus y. So to solve these problems the way I like to solve them, I want to find the lowest common denominator. And I think it's pretty clear that in this case, the lowest common denominator of all these fractions is simply the product of the two, which is x plus y times x minus y. Which means I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the lowest common denominator. So I take the numerator and multiply times x plus y times x minus y. And then I take the denominator and multiply the whole thing by x plus y times x minus y. To make things a little bit easier to see, I'm now going to go ahead and distribute this with, over the two fractions, the same over here, distribute, like that. But I'm going to write it out, so this becomes 3 over x minus y times x plus y times x minus y, plus 1 over x plus y times the common denominator, or not, yeah, lowest common denominator of x plus y times x minus y. The whole thing divided by 2 over x plus y times x plus y times x minus y minus 3 over x plus y times x minus y, and the whole thing then multiplied times x plus y times x minus y. Now, this step is not something you have to do. If you can already see how to simplify that without going through the step, that's great. But just for clarity, I just threw this in. Now we can go ahead and simplify things. Notice that we have an x minus y and an x minus y here, so they cancel out because that's in the numerator, that's in the denominator. We can think of this as over 1 to make it a little simpler like that. So oh, that's all over 1, right? And then here we can say that this x plus y cancels out this x plus y. Here, this x plus y cancels out that x plus y. And here, realize that x plus y cancels out x plus y, and x minus y cancels out x minus y. And let's see what we have left. Come up here, because we have a little bit more space. So if that's cancelled out with that, we have left the 3 times x plus y. And then here, we have left a 1 times x minus y, so plus 1 times x minus y. In the denominator, we have a 2 times x minus y left. And here we have a minus 3, and since that is cancelled out with that, we just have simply the minus 3 left. And now to continue, we simply have to get rid of the parentheses, so we distribute the numbers Let's put the quantity inside the parentheses, so we get 3x plus 3y plus x minus y divided by 2x minus 2y minus 3. And then collecting common terms, 3x plus x is 4x, 3y minus y is plus 2y, and here we have a 2x minus 2y minus 3. And then, to be absolutely completely correct, the most simple form, simplest form would be to factor out a 2 from the numerator. So this can be written as 2 times 2x plus y divided by 2x minus 2y minus 3. And that would be the final length, or the most simplified form of that ugly looking complex fraction. And that's how you do these types of problems. I think I have one more I would like to show you, so tune in to the next video and see how that next problem looks.